Hey, it's Matt, your Average Gamer, and for this one, we'll be concentrating on the Star Fist for day 25 of a build a day or build related video every day until they announce DLC. We're going to see how far we can go with this. For this one, it's a quick six minute guide on how to use the Star Fist in a great way, how to get posture damage, and basically how to use them because they're very destructive and quite good. Now for the Starfist, there's actually two things that you can do for them. You can build up consecutive attacks or you can go and build on the charged attacks as well. I went with the consecutive attack version to kind of build that up because you can throw in charged attacks too. But keep in mind, the charged attacks here are a really good selling point because they do a lot of posture damage. The biggest selling point of the Starfist themselves is the ridiculous amount of posture damage they do for a fist weapon. And the main thing here that we're going to talk about is, after we show where to get it, is how to utilize this best to make a good build out of it. What Ash of War should we put on it, and how to maximize your posture damage, because that's the best thing that you can get out of the Star Fist. Now, where do you get it? You get it in the Royal Capital. It's at the Coliseum. Basically, just go up to the Coliseum. I think everybody pretty much knows where this is at this point. And then you're going to go around the side until you enter one of the entrances that has the Star Fist sitting in it. I believe, by the way, when the capitals turn to ash, you can still actually receive this weapon. I'm going to show you where it is on the map here, but you can go down from the Erd Tree building to get there very easily. Yes, when the capitals turn to ash, I believe you can receive it as well. It's not one of those weapons like the Bolt of Ransex that you have to get beforehand. By the way, for mobs, same deal here. You can basically stun lock them. They do a lot of damage, by the way. We're using them in heavy affinity, and we're also going to be using Hora Luz Earthshaker. Why? Because it's really good with these. It actually does more damage when it's on a fist weapon instead of two-handing a weapon for some reason. And it really works well with this. With the heavy affinity and the posture damage, this combination works fantastically. And again, we're, we're beating up on some regular enemies here. We're going to show some bosses and stuff as we go. But the main point here with the Star Fist, and this is why I turned it into a quick build, is it isn't so much the Ash of War that we're using that we really want to highlight here. It's that posture damage. And with all the recent nerfs to posture damage, with the fact that it's so much harder to come by now, being able to get a reasonable amount of posture damage from a fist weapon is awesome. I mean, it works so well that you can even stun lock some bosses. You're going to see what happens here, especially field bosses or bosses that don't, they're unsuspecting, don't see you coming. You can do a lot of damage with the charged attacks and then immediately, you know, posture break them in short time and then hit them for a very decent amount of critical damage. I think the base critical is regular. It might be 100, but even so, between the regular hits, the posture breaks, they basically get stun locked and you're able to destroy them very fast. So for regular enemies, obviously you're going to see again here the posture breaking, the damage is crazy. These are a lot of fun to use by the way. If you haven't used them yet, I would recommend trying them out first on some regular enemies and field bosses and then maybe taking on some of the main game bosses. I did beat the fire giant with it, but I didn't include it for this video because it took like four minutes and it would have made the video 10 minutes and I'm not sure it would have helped anyone because I didn't even end up posture breaking him but the fight only took one try and it was relatively easy. There is one thing bad to talk about here though real quick with the fist weapons and I'm going to show you the obvious one that everybody knows when I go up to the enemy is certain enemies like the tree avatars and the general range you have you can end up missing with them very often. So do be aware of that. It is something that does happen. It really especially happens with the tree avatars. Even when you go for the heavy attack with a longer reach it just tends to miss sometimes. Still, all in all, we're on Journey 5, and the damage is still quite good, there's no doubt there, but the fact is that some angles that you're on for certain bosses and enemies, you feel like you're going to hit them with it, and it just ends up missing for some reason. With that being said, though, these are pretty awesome. Let's get into equipment. For equipment, we have the Star Fist plus 25. We have Horaloo's Earthshaker on it, NEC will do. Ritual Swords Talisman, Listen's Prosthesis, Rotten Wing Sword Insignia, the Shard for the Weapon Art, you can use the Axe Talisman as well and the Charge tier, and then we have the Consecutive Attack tier as well. So for stats, I did this on my level 200 character again, but the main thing here is just to get to 60 strength minimum. But as long as you have the weapon requirements and you're moving throughout the game and you concentrate on strength with heavy affinity, you go for posture damage, you're going to get a lot of damage out of these. They have a good amount of damage per point invested in strength and the heavy affinity. It ended up working out quite well. And we're able to put a really cool Ash of War on them too to give them a lot of power and a lot of posture damage. 
And for buffs here, it's nothing overly complicated that I'm using, but I'm drinking our tier, which is going to be the consecutive attack tier. You can use the charge tier as well. Then casting Golden Vow. Blessing Spoon's optional, but it's always good for the extra HP for melee combat. Then we're going to use Howlish Abrary, and then you get to use that awesome weapon art or the charged attacks or consecutive attacks, all of which is up to you because these weapons have a lot of variety. And I know this was my first like quicker build, but since it is a fist weapon and we're not really focused on showing off the Ash of War as much, and we're using it mostly for posture damage and whatnot, I figured like a 10 minute video probably be a little bit on the long side. So I decided to make this one a little bit quicker. I hope you guys enjoyed this. And without further ado, this is day 25 of a build a day until they announce DLC. That's right, we're on day 25. We're gonna see how far we can go with this, see if we can at least go to the anniversary, and hopefully we'll get an announcement then. But for the meantime, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you love overpowered Elden Ring builds, definitely check out my channel. There's a ton of awesome builds on it. Thanks for watching everybody, and I will catch you guys there.